Theory is going par perfectly parallel similar to one variable. In one variable, we looked at local maxima minima, then we looked at how do you find out absolute maxima or absolute minima of a function of one variable. So, what was our line of uh, thinking? If the some point is a point of local maxima or local minima, it is also a point of global maxima and global minima, right. So, what we are interested in and that means we should look at the critical points right the points where either the derivative does not exist one variable or derivative exists and is equal to zero or the boundary points so these points look at the values of the function and compare if the function has absolute maximum or minimum it will be one of those points right to ensure that the function has a absolute maximum minimum you have to justify by some other theorem for example, if the function is defined in a domain which is compact, closed and bounded in the real line, okay, then every continuous function attains maximum and minimum. Right? How to find that? You employ the calculus techniques, derivative test and so on. So, in two variables or three variables, also the same method is applied. Right? Look at the critical points, look at the values at those points and compare whichever is the largest that will be the maximum supremum whichever is the smallest will be the infimum provided the function has such things right so justify that so let us uh, look at uh, probably some so these are called absolute maximum absolute minimum so if it has then either is a boundary point or it is so absolute maximum at a point then either it is a boundary point or a critical point, okay. It has to be one of them, okay. So, there is nothing in the proof, it is just a writing that because absolute has to be local, so, okay. So, let us look at, uh, so D is the domain where uh, x, y is that mod x is less than or equal to, mod y is less than or equal to 2. So, what is the domain? mod x less than or equal to 2, mod y less than or equal to 2. What does the domain look like? It is square of what kind? Uh, absolute value, okay. So, anyway, uh, is this domain uh, compact? closed bounded right no problem okay so it is a compact set so let us look at the function fxy is equal to 4xy minus 2x square minus y cube just now we analyze that function for local maximum and local minimum but we analyze everywhere right we did not analyze it in a particular part of the plane so now we are saying restrict this function in this domain the domain being closed and bounded the function should have a absolute maximum and absolute minimum. So, how do you find out absolute maximum or absolute minimum? You have to look at the critical points. The critical points are the points where the derivatives exist and are equal to 0. So, we found out 0, 0, 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1. What are the boundary points? Boundary points are where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to mod y is equal to 2, right, those ones. So, let us analyze and compare. So, discriminant, actually 1, 1, okay, and minus 1. So, let us look at the boundary point. If d is a boundary point, then what should happen? Either x 0 will be equal to 2 or x 0 will be equal to mod x. So, either this side or that side, right. So, I, x will be going up to minus 2 or plus 2, right. So, those are the values of it and similarly y mod y. So, what are the boundary points? When x 0 is equal to 2, y is varying 
x0 is equal to minus 2, y is varying and similarly other two things, right. So, those are the boundary things. So, we have to analyze what happens, for example, let us look at x is equal to 2, right. That means, we have to fix x is equal to 2 and let y vary as a function of one variable, it comes out to be this. So, on the boundary points, look at how the function looks like and then as a function of one variable, find out what is the critical points, maximum, minimum for that function. So, those are the values on the boundary. Function does not remain constant on the boundary point, it changes. So, what is the maximum or minimum at the boundary, we have to analyze and then compare. So, look at a function of one variable, for example, when x is equal to 2, this is a function, okay, y varies between minus 2 and 2. So, for one variable, how will you find out? derivative, right. So, this is a function. So, if you check for this function, I am avoiding the calculations, it has a maximum at the point y is equal to cube root of 2. How will you find that? As function of one variable, find out the derivative, derivative equal to 0, then you want to analyze, you can apply second derivative test if you like to find out whether it is a point of maximum or a minimum. So, one variable theory will be applied to conclude that it has a maximum value at the point and the this. Okay. So, how do you now compare? Compare the values at 0, 0, compare the value at 1, 1, compare the value at minus 1, minus 1 and the boundary points and see out of this which is the largest. So, if you compare, so you get Similarly, this is uh, 2y, similarly for x2 you will be doing it, right. You are fixing, earlier fix was uh, x is equal to 2, now fix y and compare what is the value. So, that comes out to be minus 8. So, out of all the points, the absolute maximum of f is equal to 1, okay. So, all this you have to be comparing. So, for function of two variable, you have to compare the values not only at the critical points, also boundary in one variable boundary points may be at the most two for interval left and right, but here it will be probably a boundary, right. You have to see how the function on the boundary looks like, find out the maximum, minimum and then compare among all these things. So, is it okay, clear, right. Theory goes parallel to one variable only the work involved is more because the boundary in uh, two variable may be uh, a triangle, may be a circle, may be a right or may be quite complicated one. If it is quite complicated one, you may not be able to find what is the maximum minimum, some other way one has to apply. Is that okay? Right? Process is clear, rest is only computation. How do you compute? So, there are some more examples. Now, what we next we want to do is sometimes one has to find out maximum or minimum of a function with a constraint. Here we are looking at the function defined in a domain, but what does it mean saying that I want to find out function is defined in a domain, but I want to find out the maximum or the minimum with a constraint. So, for example, you may be interested in knowing that is a problem which uh, space scientists face, right. A shuttle is entering uh, in, into the earth's atmosphere, okay. A space shuttle is falling, right. It is normally done, right. Nowadays, all space shuttles, when they come back to earth, what is happening? They enter the gravitational force field of earth and they have a sort of path along which they drop somewhere in a sea or somewhere. Right. Have you ever wondered why they uh, take a drop in the sea? Why should space shuttle be maneuvered to fall in its water body, a sea? Normally, you have seen all they fall in the sea. That, there are two reasons for that. One, if it is a hard surface, then you have to control the speed. It should land very smoothly, slowly. Right. Gravity will be increasing the speed. You have to decelerate somehow. So, you have to add a add on mechanism, right, that is one and that is why probably uh, our mission 
slightly failed in the end because we could not decelerate it landed very harshly there was no c but other advantage is when something is falling on the earth its surface gets heated up because of friction because of the air friction the outer surface starts getting heated up and with when such comes something with such a mass is coming down with such a velocity right it gets so heated up then it has to be cooled down so water is a natural coolant it falls in sea and then naturally it cools down to some temperature right so the point what what we are trying to do analyze here is the body of a space shuttle is something that is a surface right that is a surface and at a particular time point there is a temperature on the surface right so what is the point on the surface where the temperature is maximum we want to analyze right so we are analyzing temperature on that body so it is a function of how many variables x y and z the position of the surface and time point t at time point t is the temperature as time changes right even if the point x y z coordinate remain the same temperature changes right so it is a function of four variables x y z and t right but those so we want to know what is the temperature at that point so the temperature is a function of four variables x y z and t right we want to know the point on the shuttle where the temperature is maximum so is a function of four variables but we want to put a constraint on x y and z that x y and z should be on that surface so that is a constraint it should satisfy the equation of the surface so that is a constraint right we don't want to as it falls temperature goes on increasing right probably somewhere but we want to know on that surface what is the temperature so in general this is a problem f say x y is a function uh, x y belonging to so the domain d oh sorry x y x x y goes to x y belonging to d right so problem is to maximize minimize f such that g x y is equal to 0 there is a relation between x and y okay for example okay let us look at a, a plane p is a plane okay x y is a point okay or let us look at the let us look at uh, to be very simple let us look at the point uh, 0 0 origin so for any point x y on the plane it has a distance right any point x y outside the plane okay uh, any point x y on the x y and z say let us the three variables x y and z so uh, this is the origin and this is the plane and let us call this point as something or let us call it p so op so what is op equal to distance distance formula x square plus z square square root that is the distance so the problem is find p such that op is smallest so this is the problem such that op is smallest so what are we going to look at so we are trying to the so this is my function fx yz 
that is the distance. So, I want to minimize this distance, but I want to minimize where is x and y? x and y lie on the plane, right? The plane may have some equation. So, let us say this plane has a equation. So, what is the normal equation of a plane? Equation in R3 of a plane. So, it will be ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to 0. Is it okay? So, this is my g x y z. I want this function f x y z to be minimized with a constraint that the point lies in the plane. That means, it should satisfy this. Right? So, following? So, this means we want to, so in this problem, minimize the function f x y z which was equal to square root of x square plus y square plus z square with constraint g x y z equal to 0. That means, there is a relation between those points x, y and z, g x, y, z is equal to 0. So, that is a constraint. Right? So, this problem occurs not only in uh, practical situations, in uh, many practical situations, uh, this also occurs in uh, probability and statistics when you want to do statistical inference and you have uh, estimates, likelihood estimates kind of a thing coming. There you want to maximize or minimize the error with respect to some constraints. So, this will come back uh, in case you are doing some courses in probability and statistics also. So, this is the kind of thing we want to do. So, these are called uh, maxima, minima with constraints. So, these are called problems of maxima, minima. with constraints. And for that, uh, uh, Lagrange has uh, proved a theorem. So, we will not go into the proof of the theorem, but what is the consequence of that theorem, how that method called Lagrange's method of constraint maxima minima is used, we will look into that. Okay? So, let me uh, look into that. Okay. So, here is what is called Lagrange's multiplier theorem. I just stating it uh, so that is clear. f and g are two functions defined in a neighborhood of the point x 0, y 0. So, f is going to be the function which is going to be maximized or minimized and g is the constraint that is going to be such that the following holds the function f has a local extimum at x 0 y 0 when restricted to c the level curve g x y equal to 0. So, that constraint right. So, g x y equal to 0 will be a curve okay, in the domain. Is it clear? X and Y are related with each other. So, Y as a function of X can be computed probably. So, that is a lever curve. right? So, saying this is the constraint. So, the conditions are if both the partial derivative of F and G exist and are continuous in that neighborhood G X 0 Y 0 is equal to 0 and derivative uh, this is a gradient. If you remember what was the gradient? partial derivative of g with respect to x comma partial derivative of g with respect to y that vector is not equal to 0, then this relation must be satisfied. So, it is a necessary condition. right? So, f is the function which is to be maximized or minimized, g is the constraint. So, it says then there must exist some lambda say that this is equal to lambda times this. Okay? Now, if you look at this, partial derivative uh, gradient of f, it gives you 2 is a vector, is a vector equation. So, what is this vector equation? Partial derivative of f with respect to x is equal to lambda times partial derivative of g with respect to x. Right? 
second component equation is partial derivative of f with respect to y is lambda times partial derivative of g right and what is the third equation third equation is gxy equal to 0 that is another relation so three variables okay x0 is not known y0 is not known lambda is not known and you got three equations so you have to solve these three equations and find out the points x0 y0 that will give you constraint maxima and minima right so uh, so let us look at one example at least to just illustrate so let us look at the function fxy equal to xy okay on the unit circle we want to maximize that means we want to find x and y the function is domain is everywhere function is defined for all points in the plane but we want to know what is the maximum and the minimum value of the function on when x and y satisfy the equation of the circle right so on the unit circle so what is the constraint x square plus y square equal to 1 so g x y is x square plus y square minus 1 is equal to 0 so that is a constraint okay so what are the equations that you will be solving Grad so gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g that is one vector equation so that means y partial derivative of uh, with respect to x that is y partial derivative of g with respect to y that is 2y so fx is equal to lambda times gx fy is equal to lambda times gy the second and the third one is the equation of the constraint that is a circle so these three equations have to be solved mind it they are not linear equations okay so it is not linear algebra being done because these equations right this is linear this is linear but this is not linear okay so those techniques of linear equations may not work so somehow you have to the basic idea is you can remove lambda from first two equations probably find a relation between x and y put it in that equation right and find y and then find x so that is how you do it so this is this can be a problem sort of how to find equations uh, find solutions so it comes out that these are the possible points right so once you have found the points the values of the points now how to find the maximum or the minimum look at the values at these points and compare which is the largest which is the smallest so that gives you so once you do that you get these are the values so 1 by 2 is the maximum and 1 by uh, minus 1 by 2 is the minimum and they are attained at more than one point okay so these so this is called uh, lagrange multiplier method for finding constraint maxima and minima sometimes the constraint can be more than one sometimes the constraint can be more than one fxy you want to make maximize minimize with constraint g1 and g2 then one more variable will enter into picture right so you will take the constraint if you want fxy equal to 0 also gxy uh, g1 equal to 0 g2 equal to 0 that means you have a linear combination of that should be equal to 0 right so you can make it as a one constraint but one more variable enters into picture so that is with more than one so uh, let me just state that so the examples uh, two variables these were three variables number of equations will become three vectors lambda so four equations in four variables so that is okay one, but constraint is still one so let me uh, look at multiple constraints yeah here is a multiple constraint g and h are two constraints which are applied to the function f right so what we are saying is you can look at a linear combination of these two as if there is one constraint right so look at lambda and mu to be scalars right variables of course so gradient f is equal to lambda times g plus mu times 
h right so this is again a vector equation so how many uh, three components x y and z so it will give you three equations right fourth one comes g equal to 0 fifth comes from h is equal to 0 and how many variables to be solved x y z lambda and mu so the problem becomes slightly more complicated that's all but it can be done okay so uh, and many a times finding solutions of such things uh, you may not be able to find exactly solutions so there is something called numerical techniques for finding solutions so if you do a course in numerical uh, techniques you, you may come across these things so for example here is the analyze the problem of finding the points on the intersection of the planes there are two planes when they intersect what you will get when two planes intersect what you will get you will get a line right so essentially you want a point on that line which is closest to the origin so one method could be right you find out the intersection of the two planes as solving system of linear equations find out that linear equation that line and then closest to the origin so reduce but why to do that much you can just look at so this is the constraint what is our distance formula x square plus y square plus z square square root that is a function f to be minimized with the constraint g that is the first one x plus y plus z is equal to 1 minus 1 equal to 0 h 3x plus 2y plus z minus 6 is equal to 0 so these two constraints right so a simple problem look goes to Lagrange multiplier so you do that okay so with respect to these constraints and then you can solve them now problem becomes slightly more uh, involved because two constraints are there and non-linear things may come into picture so find x y and z put in that equations and solve and so your ability to solve those equations you get two equations in lambda and mu then a method of solving and then solve the, those two equations get values of lambda and mu and then find out the point so the basic idea is as the constraint increase you can take a linear combination of them to be the constraint right so these kind of things will come into picture for you so today we have just uh, tried to look at uh, maxima minima problems of several variables right and uh, theory goes parallel to one variable essentially that find critical points first though the points are the points where either the deri partial derivatives do not exist or derivative partial derivative exist and are equal to 0 or the critical uh, or the points which are the boundary points later on and the, there are possibility of points out of this critical points points with neither maxima nor minima probably can be what is called a saddle point right so to analyze them you have uh, derivative tests second derivative test discriminant discriminant positive second derivative f x x less than 0 local maximum derivative uh, discriminant positive second derivative less than um, bigger than 0 local minimum discriminant equal to 0 saddle point no ok good so less than 0 saddle point and equal to 0 it is inconclusive bigger than 0 less than 0 you can conclude but equal to 0 you cannot conclude you may have to go directly and the method is in the domain try to look at points some curves along with it could be maximum along with it could be minimum to give you the value and then same method applied to uh, with constraints it gives you f x y to be maximized minimized with respect to constraint g right so we have to solve the equation f is e gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g and if more variable more constraints then lambda and mu come into picture so okay right so let us stop here